Hey everyone, it's time for an update on Short Fuse, a roguelike all about defusing bombs of various integrity. Let's start with Chad and Mike who have an update on our defusable models. Following the model updates from last time, the shoe is the latest to be updated. It got a complete overhaul with the new model being significantly smoother and more detailed than the last. We're also working on a new quirk to make defusing this bomb more fun. The models haven't been the only thing we've been polishing up. The shop has also been receiving some much needed updates. When we first designed the shop, we wanted it to function like an old web page. Take a look at it compared to the, our original shop. Much better, right? But there's still so much we can do to take it across the finish line. For one, we now have working categories and filters. I'm sure the big red X's over them gave you some clues, but I just didn't have time to implement them originally, so it's nice to finally go back and finish them up. I already had the assets from this from the original implementation, so it was all code changes and some new UI code to support the classic blue to purple hyperlink style. For the hyperlinks, the UI elements in the filter and sort section store whether or not they've been clicked. Once clicked, the colors change to purple. Again, it's not too much going on here, but it's a nice touch that makes the connection to websites more concrete. As for how these options work under the hood, I'm performing some C-sharp link operations on the list of items. Whenever an option is selected, the shop first picks every item the same category, then applies the filter, and then sorts. The shop item UI is cached to prevent repeated instantiation and destruction. So then we loop through each available item and display the relevant information. The categories are stored as a flag enum, which means that a single shop item can belong to multiple categories. The idea for the future here is to be able to dynamically apply categories so it feels more like a real store than a static page. That way we can offer sales and promotions to bring us closer to corporate Oh yeah, and the filters and sorting is much simpler with just standard enums. If we scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll also see that we have pages in the shop. Honestly, the primary purpose for this was originally to match the aesthetic. I mean, not many websites had infinitely scrolling pages in the 90s, but it's also a performance change, which is a nice bonus. This is because we can limit the total number of shop item elements that are created by Unity. As for the pages themselves, they work by storing the starting and ending index. When the pages change, the items are selected based on these indices. And one more thing before we move on. There's now a refresh animation whenever the content on the page is changed. In my opinion, it really helps sell that old school style. It works by applying a shader to an image element. We apply a step node onto a linear gradient, which really makes the page feel slow. The most complicated part of the setup was rearranging the page updates so the UI changes only take effect after the page is fully white. Otherwise, you'd end up seeing the new page before the loading was supposed to complete, which breaks the illusion. For now, this is accomplished through an event that broadcasts the loader's status. The individual parts hook into this event and are prompted to update when the event is invoked. In the future, I'd like to take further advantage of this loading sequence to increase the game's performance. The computer right now is prone to lag spikes due to the frequent UI draws and lots of changes at once. Luckily, it's harder to notice lag here in the computer than in the main game due to the nature of the interface, but it's still something I'd like to improve upon. But speaking of things happening behind the scenes, as we continue building short views, we're trying our best to make decisions that won't handicap us later on as long as it doesn't cause a sink in our productivity. The primary example here for us is localization. We don't currently have plans to add any other language support, but it costs us very little time to make sure our implementations support it, so why not, right? If you've been keeping up with our shorts, you've probably seen a few clips of this in the Fuse Mail tab lapses. We're using the Unity localization package here, which is pretty straightforward. We add a trigger to the component with the text and link it to a string from our localization table. And honestly, that's all there is to it. The localization package uses Unity addressables behind the scenes, which we also happen to be using for our wave presets. They don't need to always be loaded, especially if they belong to a track different from the one the player is currently in. With addressables, we can load wave presets dynamically reducing our overhead. Right now we're loading them in by the track, though I'm planning to update this to be by chunks of levels within tracks if it ever becomes an issue. As an added bonus, the addressable groups for wave presets are managed automatically by the wave preset system, so we don't need to think about them. There's also a lot of other features that come with addressables, like easy content updates, but we don't have a reason to use those right now. All this work isn't just hiding in our private storage never to be played by you guys. We'll be at 1UP State 2024 in a few weeks. It's a, here, I'll quote, it's a new game development expo for New York's Tech Valley region. This is our second year exhibiting there, and it's their second year of existing there. It was a great time last year, it'll be great this year, I'm sure. It's just 10 bucks to get in. You can try out a whole bunch of games here from industry professionals. We, of course, will have a whole new build to show. You can try out all the new features. It'll be great to see you there on October 19th at the Albany Capital Center. What do you think about our updates? We're still working on the game show transition behind the scenes, but it's still a bit too early to show off some news content. We'll continue to have shorts every week detailing more of our progress, so make sure to check them out. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you next month.